Okay, so good afternoon everyone. Uh, I'm Michele Rosso and today I will talk about my research project. Like he said, uh, we are dealing with the DNS, DNS of uh, fully resolved liquid droplets in a turbulent flow. So the objective of our research is the investigation of the two-way coupling effects uh, of finite size deformable liquid droplets uh, on the chiasotropic turbulence using direct numerical simulation. The motivation behind this uh, project is that dispersed liquid gas multiphase flows occur in a wide range of natural phenomena and engineering devices, uh, most notably in combustion of liquid fuel sprays. One very important uh, application, here is an example, is the study of the physics in uh, the um, combust turbulent combustion process inside of a jet engine. You can see a schematic here. Uh, the air enters uh, uh, through an inlet uh, and is then compressed via a compressor. And then it ends up uh, in the combustion chamber where the fuel is sprayed inside uh, and uh, ignited. Uh, finally, the, um, uh, the exhaust goes go, uh, go through a turbine and finally outside. So for a jet uh, uh, engine, we have uh, various um, chambers, combustion chambers, where actually the turbulent combustion takes uh, uh, place. Uh, and uh, what we're interested in is what actually happens here in this uh, uh, other picture. So the injector sprays the fuel inside uh, the turbulent environment uh, and uh, so as soon as the fuel goes out, uh, it starts to break down uh, into droplets of uh, various size uh, and the process of combustion starts. So it is pretty crucial to be able to um, understand the physics behind uh, this process uh, in order to be able to better design and optimize uh, uh, engine of this time, for example. And this is just an example of applications. So um, in 2010, uh, El Gobashi, Lucci and Ferrante uh, perform a simulation of uh, DNS with the dispersed solid uh, spherical particles. In the video, you can see a slice uh, of the computational domain. You have uh, on your left uh, the case uh, of a pure um, single phase flow uh, for a cubic grid of uh, um, 256 uh, grid nodes per direction and a Reynolds lambda of uh, 75. What you see here, like I said, is a slice uh, uh, and it portrays the uh, evolution in time of the dissipation rate of turbulent kinetic energy. Now, on the other side, uh, you have uh, uh, the same uh, initial turbulent field, uh, but with the presence of dispersed solid spherical particles. In that simulation, we have uh, 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 64,000, uh, uh, and they were covering like a zero uh, volume fraction of 0 0.1. These uh, um, droplets, uh, 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 despite the fact that it doesn't seem so, they have the same size. Uh, simply, the slice cut it, so they go and they pass through the plane of the slice. But they all have the same size, uh, and they are all of uh, 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 with a diameter comparable with the Taylor length scale, and pretty much uh, 16 times uh, the Kolmogorov scale, which is the smallest case of turbulence. So as you can see, uh, Luci Ferrante del Gobashi proved that the presence of dispersed solid spherical particles uh, uh, increases the dissipation rate of turbulent kinetic energy, particularly in the um, front of, uh, um, of the particle itself. And uh, since uh, the dissipation rate uh, uh, of TKE is uh, a crucial parameter to determine uh, the, um, the, the, the physics behind the combustions, uh, it is clear that, uh, like I said, this kind of research is pretty crucial for all combustions, turbulent combustion problem. So in general, uh, DNS, uh, um, both for single phase uh, or multi-phase flow, is very demanding. It's a very demanding kind of simulation. Um, for example, consider that to simulate a single phase isotropic turbulence with Reynolds uh, lambda around 300, we require uh, a grid of uh, 2048 cubes in order to be able to resolve the smallest uh, scale. Uh, we tried with our current code to simulate uh, this case uh, just to test a uh, single phase uh, solver and uh, we required uh, like uh, 12 hours on more than uh, 60,000 processor in order to advance the solution for about three large uh, editor over times. 
So uh, if we have to consider, like we're going to do in the next uh, slides, uh, dispersed two-phase uh, turbulence, uh, we would require uh, about double the time of a single-phase turbulence. So that's why, uh, for simulation of this type, uh, a computational facility like Blue Water is required. I mean, this kind of work cannot be done on, on regular uh, workstation. So in order to tackle the problem, we um, uh, developed a 3D Navier-Stock solver for incompressible two-phase flow. Uh, we solved the continuity equation and the momentum equation in, uh, dimens in dimensionless form. For two-phase flow, the momentum equation uh, uh, contain all the relevant terms that are present even in the case of uh, uh, single-phase flow, meaning the convective term, the pressure gradient, the viscous term, and the gravity term, plus a term uh, that you can see here that accounts for uh, the surface tension between the two phases. The all uh, simulation is ruled by three uh, parameters, uh, the Reynolds number, the Freud number, and the Weber number. All of them, in our case, are computed by using the um, gas phase as a reference. Uh, in order to um, track uh, the interface, uh, so the, the droplets uh, surface, uh, between the uh, two phases, gas and liquid, we use the level set method. So basically, uh, in the whole computational domain, we define uh, uh, a function phi uh, that we choose to be assigned this function, meaning that in every point of the domain, uh, uh, we have a scalar value that represents uh, the uh, closest uh, distance uh, from normal distance from the interface. And uh, this uh, function has a value uh, depending on, uh, as a uh, sign, depending on uh, whether we are inside uh, the liquid phase, in this case uh, we choose to have it minus, or outside, in this case we choose to have it plus. And phi is equal zero uh, on the interface between the two phases. Uh, this phi function is advected by means of a standard advection equation, where u is the fluid velocity. And, uh, but uh, in order to keep uh, phi um, distance function throughout the whole simulation, we also need to solve a reinitialization equation until convergence is reached. This guarantees uh, phi to be smooth uh, and well behaved uh, for all the simulation. Now, in order to advance this solution, we have uh, uh, to adopt a, a variable density projection method. So uh, the main idea is to first advance for one time step uh, the Navier-Stokes equation, the momentum equation, without considering the pressure gradient. And uh, this will allow us to compute a, velo a provisional velocity u star. Uh, this provisional velocity is then used to um, build a right-hand side uh, for a variable coefficient Poisson equation. And the solution is this variable coefficient Poisson equation allow us to compute the pressure at the next time level. Finally, the pressure at the next time level is used to correct the provisional velocity U star and uh, obtain uh, the velocity that at the next time step, which is divergence-free and therefore uh, satisfy the continuity equation. Now, this variable coefficient Poisson equation is the most time the solution of this equation is the most time consuming part of the whole algorithm. Uh, in general, DNS uh, um, for both single phase and multi phase flow is uh, uh, like is slowed down by the solution of the Poisson equation. For single phase, uh, phase flow, though, the density is a constant, so this equation reduces to uh, a standard Poisson equation and a direct solution is feasible via FFT. In our case, this is not possible because rho now uh, depends uh, upon space. So we have a non-separable equation and therefore we cannot apply directly FFT. And uh, also, like I said, uh, the Poisson equation is mission critical since it accounts for about 70-80% uh, of the solution time. Since we can't apply FFT for the solution of this equation, we need uh, uh, to solve the linear system that arises from the finite different discretization of uh, the Poisson equation. And to do so, we decided to use the conjugate gradient method together with the uh, uh, geometric algebraic multigrid uh, preconditioner. Uh, we didn't develop all the detail of the solution, but we took advantage of the Petsy library, 
that provided us with all the tools necessary to uh, put together the linear solver for the system. Now, the implementation of uh, multi-grid has uh, some uh, limitation that we will hope to overcome soon. Uh, um, in, in fact, we adopt a 3D domain decomposition to partition the computational domain. And uh, uh, therefore, each subdomain is local to a certain processor. The problem is uh, that multi-grid, uh, um, if we decide to use a certain amount of multi-grid levels, for example, K, we are limited uh, mm, to have uh, uh, at least uh, two to the k minus one nodes per direction. And that's the limit the amount of processor that can be used for a given, given grid size. So currently we're looking into ways to uh, improve this. One is uh, improving the communication topology, so speeding up the calculation for the same amount of processor. But actually, we would also like to uh, experiment with OpenMP and MPI, uh, particularly for the solution of the Poisson equation, such a way that on a single node, I can we can use all pretty much all the level of multigrid we want without requiring uh, exchange of information between processors. So, uh, and this is exactly what we were trying to achieve. Now, uh, what you see here is our first uh, validation test uh, of uh, our code. So, uh, for the moment, we don't include uh, uh, turbulence yet because we want to test uh, that the code is able to solve uh, uh, and tackle like um, the physics we are interested in. What you see here is uh, a, a droplet, initially uh, spherical, that uh, is uh, set into a um, quiescent air. So the droplet is uh, uh, left to fall under the solely effect of gravity. We have that inside the droplet there is uh, um, uh, water and outside there is gas, so the uh, density ratio is about uh, 800. And uh, what we would like to achieve uh, would be to uh, verify that the droplet reaches the terminal velocity that we will compare with experiments, of course, uh, and uh, also that the change in shape uh, uh, matches uh, the real physics of uh, uh, the, the case. What you see here is just a very small test uh, using periodic conditions, simply because uh, if you let uh, a droplet of uh, like this one that has a diameter of 0.6 millimeters, it would take an extremely long um, uh, length before it reaches the uh, terminal velocity. Therefore, it's not feasible to uh, have a simulation like this in a fixed frame of reference. Uh, what we are about to do, uh, we will do shortly our short-term goal, is to change the reference system and go uh, and fix the reference frame on the, um, on the droplet uh, in such a way we don't need such a big domain. The interesting thing is that about this test uh, is that uh, we can see already some uh, um, good results as far as the shape is, concer is uh, concerned because uh, for a droplet that small, there's no uh, change shape, almost. And uh, our solver is able to um, like capture that. And at the same time, it's also able to uh, <coughs> be robust for very large density ratio, like uh, 800 or also I um, jump viscosity jumps. So in here, a further a further test uh, the vorticity field around the droplet. Uh, we can see oh no <laughs> we can see the uh, two counter uh, counter rotating uh, vorticities, uh, and uh, the shape uh, of the droplet itself uh, is uh, pretty much uh, constant. Is uh, still a sphere as it is supposed to be. We will repeat, of course, the simulation with larger droplets uh, where actually the change of shape uh, is uh, more noticeable. So our final goal is to repeat the experiment I showed you before, uh, but instead of using uh, solid particles, we would like to replace the solid particles with variable shape droplets, liquid droplets, uh, and see the effects that uh, they have on the turbulent structures. So before finishing, I would like to thank uh, uh, NSF and Prague for the grant that allow us to um, perform this uh, project and uh, the Blue Water support, particularly Dr. Craner and Manisha Gaibe for their help.
Thank you. Yeah. So currently, the code is MPI only? Currently, the code is MPI only. We are in the talk with Manisha because the problem is that it everything would be okay except uh, the pet C part. So th th the fact is that if we want to um, like use OpenMP MP, we will eventually need to go into a pet C and start to modify some parts of it. Because um, I think that PETC right now has OpenMP only for the definition of vector and matrices, but the actual solvers are not uh, uh, shared memory. So they are just, they are MPI only. So that would be the thing to do. Because like, um, uh, basically for solving this kind of equation, uh, conjugate gradient and multigrade is the way to go. And the fact is that when you start to have larger grids, so you would like to be able to use all the processors that you can't. But like I said, if you use an optimal level of multigrid, uh, may require a subdomain too large, at that point you cannot shrink it. So this seems the more plausible solution, but we'll talk with Manisha tomorrow, by the way, about this. It's all Fortran, yeah, Fortran and 90. Array, uh, uh, for the moment, not Core A. It's just Fortran 90, a little bit object, so okay. that's it, yeah. Yeah? In this, uh, in thi so in this one, uh, me, so uh, how do you implement the inflow, outflow boundary condition? So that's the point. In this chunk that I showed you, I we uh, explicitly accounted for the hydrostatic pressure in such a way we could use periodic conditions because it was just a small run because uh, in such a way that it would re-enter without interfering with the wake from the previous run. But like I said, the the, the, the what you should do is to have like an open boundary, or you can also keep it, uh, if you have it long enough, you can keep it periodic and make it fall. The problem is that it would fall for so long uh, before reaching the terminal velocity that you would need a domain uh, that is huge. So at that point, uh, the idea would be to change uh, the perspective um, and uh, be uh, on the droplet. And at that point, yes, you would have an inlet, an inflow condition uh, that, that should equal the terminal velocity. And so, and on the other side, you would have the droplet falling. It would fall faster, basically. And at a certain point, it would reach equilibrium. But we are still in the process of developing that. Uh, it has been done. So, Yep. Yeah, well, so the simulation you saw with solid particles uh, was done with the I, uh, an immerse boundary method. And therefore, the Poisson equation was still uh, um, uh, a standard Poisson equation. So, and so it could have been solved with FFT. Uh, the presence of the droplet, the main problem is that the, the tracking of the interface is easier than IBM uh, because level set method handles everything auto automatically. The problem is uh, uh, the solution of, uh, of the Poisson equation simply because you have a density jump. So that's the real computational challenge. Uh, and that's also, that's why we, we needed throughout these years, uh, a lot of adjustment because it was not as trivial as like uh, just applying FFT. So that's the main bottleneck and the main problem that needs to be solved. So, 